Welcome back everyone, Jose 21 Crisis here, and today we are playing some more Grand Prix World 2001. Last time around, it was a bit of a damage control situation, we did have a 2-3 finish in Britain, but then came around Austria, and we didn't do that well there. Alonso was fourth behind Coulthard, Michael Schumacher didn't have a good race, which is good for us, but uh, Coulthard did have a good race, and he's leading the championship. But <coughs> Excuse me. Bernoulli's race is best left uh, undescribed. But Britain, it was very good. Bernoulli did finish second. He was faster all day. So, at the very least, he did good there. So, uh, as a result of, the, of those two races, Alonso is fourth uh, way back from Coulthard. He's 31 points back. Ace Shield is still very, very optimistic that we could still catch up to them. I will keep working towards that because it's not impossible. A 31 point comeback in uh, how many races? Uh, six races. It's not impossible. It's mathematically a possibility. But more realistically, I think we're looking to finish third and fourth in this championship. Maybe. We could get lucky. DC and Michael could have plenty DNFs and we will be right back in it. But we, we, we got to be realistic. Second, it's difficult in the constructors. I doubt we're gonna get second. Third, it's like the minimum, bare minimum we're gonna be able to achieve, which I'm pretty happy with. So, last time around, I did upgrade the car. We got a new issue in the form of understeering slow corners, which is very good because it's a very fixable issue in terms of setup. And there's only one race where we, we where we will have that issue. That is Hungary. We will worry about that later. For now, I'm working on modifying the front wing so that we get rid of that issue. Our handling right now is 72, which, as you can see from the performance chart, we get a bit closer to Ferrari and McLaren. Not sure how close, not sure how we are relative to the rest of them, but we're getting closer. And that means we're going to, at the very least, Germany, maybe not Hungary, but after that Spa and Monza, they could be very good races for us. We we just have to look and see. I did the usual uh, testing. I did 10, 7, 23, 159 miles with this configuration for the drivers. Got full setup, but I only used four points. I will show you why in a moment. Full development, which is why we're working on a new part, and full research, which I'm going to employ right away. One point for the front wing and not technology. Two points for traction, that should be fine. Uh, traction, uh, power brakes. Okay. Um, I put some percentages in Marlboro, in Renault, and in Michelin. The idea of that is getting bonus for those deals because um, Marlboro is just more cash. Engine, they are gonna pay us a bit, uh, Renault I mean, and we're gonna be able to remap the engine. Uh, sadly, Renault doesn't have enough points to sign this as a work deal. Very unfortunate. But Michelin does have enough to sign as a work deal, and we're gonna work on that work deal so we're able to control a uh, tire R&D. And when you control tire R&D, you can make some of the best tires ever, including super durable tires, which I will take advantage of next year. We might not have a good car next year, but at the very least, we're going to have good tires, and that's everything that matters. Uh, LPSN and Parmalat, the people were bringing to Germany, although Germany is not that uh, like high level in terms of hospitality. But at the very least, we're bringing them. For this race, I'm going to give Alonso the soft tires, and he's going to be running the one stop, and Bernoldi is going to be running the zero stop. As mentioned before, the zero stop is a realistic option in this race, and we're gonna be running it. So, put two points in tarmac from uh, for both drivers from our four points, that gives us six. The reason for that is that, actually I will show you the reason for that when we get to Hungary, but uh, the, the rundown is, with these points, we'll be able to go into Hungary and not have the slow corners issue. Gonna have to mess around with the setup a bit as well to, you know, have a decent competent car in Hungary because Hungary is really tough to get a good setup. Um, orders. This doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna set this up right away. Set this at 8. 10, 10, 8. Uh, no braking. 
and put six acceleration. We're not gonna be able to use too much acceleration, otherwise the car is gonna overheat and that's gonna be pretty bad for us. Everything else is confirmed. Save the game and let's get in there. Deutschland, okay. 2003 German Grand Prix, it's gonna be dry, it's gonna be high wind speed. I could have used my points instead of on tarmac, on uh, wind, to get rid of this issue, but it, it's fine. Uh, if only these soft tires were better. We don't have any better tires either. Still, the, the, the hard is super hard, it's super durable. So, it should be fine. Right, let's get in there. David Coulthard, once again, takes pole position four tenths faster than Michael Schumacher. Then you have Giancarlo Fisichella, Rubens Barrichello in the Williams. And then some bad news. Oliver Panis is fifth, sixth is De La Rosa, seventh is Alonso. The Benetton seem to be faster now. Part of it, I think, was the fact that I used accelerated time in qualifying because I couldn't be bothered to watch the entirety of it. And that means we get slower times than we should. Right now we're 1.3 seconds slower than Coulthard, which I don't think we are, but that's the way this works. Saracen is 8, Alonso just beat him on his final lap. Ralph Schumacher is 9, with Frensen 10th, Weber 11th, and Bernoldi is 12th. Raikkonen underperforming his 13th. Here's the rest of them, of course the Jaguars still damn slow. Damn slow, the, the minorities are faster than the Jaguars still. It's just amazing. Ford, what are you doing? It's gonna be a 30 degree, hot race, dry, high wind speed, it is fine. I'm amazed at the fact that Renault has not brought a single upgrade in terms of engines. We desperately need new engines and they just don't bring them. Okay, so Alonso is going to be running 28 laps on a single set of tires. 8 and 17 laps on his final set of tires. Make it 27. 27. I think that should be fine. I mean, he's just not going to stop. He's going to start his race on a set of hearts. He should have no trouble accomplishing that. Pretty simple strategy, Alonso should be able to overcut plenty people while Bernoldi should just end up ahead of plenty people. Like, it should not be that difficult, it's a pretty simple strategy, a single half race report at lap 27. Only one second part in this race, I hope. Oof. Okay, let's get in there, see what happens. Of course, go ahead and save the race start and lower this to 100%. We have plenty of overtake for that reason. Yeah, for that reason, I increase a bit the braking for the start of this race. I will increase it to max as the lap goes on. So let's see. Five lights. Can we get a decent race start from our boys? Matsakan is gone. We cannot get a nice race start from our boys. Well, at least Bernoldi climbed up a place. Alonso did not go up in terms of off line. We can go 10-10 in, in case of those orders. We're going backwards. We are going backwards. Weber, though, also went backwards, so it's not the end of the world. We got the good animation for Alonso overtaking a bunch of people. He's 10th. Bernoldi got his rear wing broken. Damn it, man. Go in and put tire set number 6. Put one extra lap. Someone clearly tried to take out Bernoldi. Bernoldi not having a great race. Of course the engine is vibrating. That's because you broke your rear wing. There goes Bernoldi. Someone killed Enrique Bernoldi. Oh, great. So it's only... Okay. I remember a long time ago when Matakana was still on the team. That David Coulthard... Go ahead and block. Alonso is fifth. That David Coulthard took him out. And I still am pissed off. By the way, uh, Matakane, who got killed by Kr all those years ago, is in the pits. So who? John. John Alesi took a prostate. He took out Enrique Bernoldi. 
After all this time, John, why do you have to do this to us? After all the great times, you go ahead and do this. This offense will not be forgotten, John. It will not be forgotten. Anyway, Alonso's play right now. I, 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 I will proceed with my beef with John Lacy. I cannot... I cannot believe I'm going to beef with John Alonso Alonso's fifth, seemingly holding nicely with the group ahead. Although slap, he's the third fastest man on track, although half a second slower than Coulthard and Mike, which is not ideal. It should be fine though. Remember, we are planning to overcut all of these people, and the current gap is. Well, I can only see the gap to um, Rubens. It's just two seconds to Rubens. I'm going to guess it's like five seconds, so we should be fine. I'm going to increase Alonso's orders from one breaking to five breaking. So that he can start putting the moves on Fisichella. And now let's cut the recording. Only one half race report when Alonso pits and... Sauber and Alesi, they have become public enemy number one in this campaign now. Alexi is a traitor. So there is an interesting situation going down right now, and that is, uh, first of all, David Coulthard all the way back here. He, he might be three-stopping, he might be two-stopping. His uh, pit stop time says he... I mean, that says anything. Could be a two-stop, could be a three-stop, because they're they are roughly as long as... Their line in this track is pretty similar, but the point is, uh, David Kulhar, I think it's not in contention for this win. Mark Schumacher, he just pit, he is absolutely not in contention for this win. Ladies and gentlemen, Fernando Alonso is leading the race, and he is very much in great position to win the German Grand Prix, which is gonna be a nice bounce back, and if the guys behind me, Fisichella, Weber, and uh, Barrichello, are one stopping? He's gonna gain massively on DC and MSC. So hold on, there is a nice chance for something amazing here. Also, Fisichella, uh, Barrichello, and Weber are just making a bunch of mistakes and falling off from Alonso, which is definitely something nice to see. I don't want them just being plastered all over Alonso. He I just set him so that he's uh, is able to uh, not wear his tires, but wear his tires too low, to 1-1. To one, one. Because a while ago I had him like on 5 breaking, just defending and attacking these boys, because otherwise he would be 4th right now if I didn't use those uh, the 5 orders. But the tires are wearing out a bit faster than I planned. They still can make it to lap 27 and even lap 28 and I might be able to stretch this stop to that point. Just something to keep in mind, that I had to fight with those boys to be able to retain first place, uh, net first place. So, welcome to the health race report and Fernando Alonso is leading in fairly, this is, it's a fairly calm drive up ahead. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, physical pit a while ago, Weber pit plenty time ago. Eric Kello pit it not that long ago. Uh, he pit it a lap earlier than Fizzy. They are both on a one stop. David Coulthard is on a three stop, which is suicide in this track. Stop pushing. Uh, don't need to push, but do increase your fuel a bit, uh, the, your acceleration a bit, so they put a bit more fuel. I don't want to be worried about fuel. Good job from the crew. Alonso is going to come out in the lead. F uh, physical. Michael Schumacher is on a two-stop as well, so he should not be a concern. And um, push. So that we get away from him. In the end, I managed to extend uh, Alonso's stint by one lap, and that should be all she wrote in terms of the competitive part for this race. Alonso should go on to win it, but I could be wrong. And I'm wrong plenty of times. For some reason, the VARs have the fastest lap of the race. That's because they probably overtook someone right around here, which lets you jump a significant portion of the track at very, very high speeds. But anyway, the point is, he needs to stop pushing. The point is, 
Fernando Alonso is leading from the Michael who should pit uh, lap 30 or so. Then Fisichella, Coulthard, Weber, Raikkonen, Barrichello, Schumacher, Ralph, Montoya and Saracen rounding out the top 10. And bearing reliability issues, this should be a Fernando Alonso win and a significant points deduction relative to Coulthard. He should get closer to Coulthard, especially because the man is three-stopping. He should be... Maybe he ends up just outside of the points, which is going to be devastating for him. Michael Schumacher could also, I think, I did not pay enough attention when I was reading the point standings. There goes Coulthard, final stop. There goes Ralph, so at the very least, it's going to be able to beat Ralph. I think Michael Schumacher could take the points lead in this race. Or if he doesn't, he should be very, very close to... No, he's not going to take the points lead because Physical is there. Physical is going to finish second. Maybe Barrichello third. But yeah, uh, Michael is going to get closer to Coulthard as well. But we'll see what happens at the end of this race. This has been the Half Race Report. And hopefully I see you at the end of this race instead of halfway through it with some kind of Fernando Alonso issue. So see you then. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Fernando Alonso is still leading the German Grand Prix. Physical I tried to chase him down, but as you can see, he's very, very, very far away from him. And third right now is Michael Schumacher fighting with Rubens Barrichello, who I don't think has much of a chance of beating him because he's on worn tires compared to Michael Schumacher. Alonso is catching up to some traffic, but that traffic is not going to come The one-stop proves to be as powerful as it has ever been. And the soft tires give us this light edge that we needed to beat the Ferraris. Especially after that poor qualifying, Fernando Alonso rounds the final corner and will win the 2003 German Grand Prix. 10 points to his name. David Coulthard was nowhere. Michael Schumacher didn't get that many points. Sadly, thanks to the traitor, John Alesi, we don't get a 1-2 finish in this race. I don't think we will have gotten a 1-2 finish anyway, even if Bernoldi had managed to finish the race. Race race 1, yeah, good thing. I don't think we get a 1-2 finish either way because... Or maybe we do. Maybe we get, maybe we get Bernoldi running around with those cars somewhere around here. Which would have been awesome, I won 3 finish. Maybe not 2. But still, I would have liked to add some uh, 6 more points to, to our count. Still, 10 points. Confirmation that Alonso wins this race from Fisichella, Michael Schumacher, Rubens Barrichello, David Coulthard finishes 5th, disappointing race for, for him, 6th is Weber, 7th is Raikkonen, 8th is Ralph Schumacher in the arrows, Panis sadly cannot make it to the points, he is 9th, and Frentzen in the other arrows is 10th. Here is the rest of them, the BARs dis uh, decided to disappoint, same with De La Rosa, Alessian, Bernoldi and Berti, the only DNFs in this year event. So, David Coulthard now with 82 points, Michael Schumacher with 75, 7 points to him. Fisicala still in championship contention, but he's 21 points back. So he needs a, you know, a series of amazing results. Same with us, Alonso is 25 points back. At the very least, we can beat Fisicala. Like, if we end up not being able to fight for the championship, at the very least, we're going to be able to beat Fisicala. At least, that's the objective. Maybe Schumacher if things go right, but yeah. Bernoldi of course doesn't add any points because he got taken out by this man. But there he is. 88 points, could have been better, but I think we did some more points than McLaren. Definitely not more than Ferrari, sadly. We made a profit, 600k, that's perfectly fine, start working in commercial. We will either repair or get a new car. I need to see how damaged it's uh, Bernoldi's car. 
excessive wear. I know testing and stuff. I know technology is ready. I just haven't had the time or the personnel. Uh, Katia, mission reduces four, elf increases, paramount increases, Norto reduces. Norto is going away, so I don't mind. Marlboro, Michelin, and Reynolds getting better deals. That's that's always been the objective. Okay, uh, Alonso adds another race win to his total. DC lead, led the grid. Didn't help him. Ronaldi finished the race early. Of course, he shouldn't be happy. Arrow's going to Asia Tech. <laughs> the thing has come full, full circle. Uh, Jordan will be using Renault engines. Interesting choice. That's just more data for Renault. Uh, Jack issues with physical and button. Good thing he had them, because otherwise I think he could have beaten us. Uh, not much else. Confirm regulations. Why will De Montesemolo be the best manager? Why will he be? Okay, I need to see if there's any driver aid I could steal. So we know Benetton has traction control. McLaren has uh, auto gear, same with Minardi. And Williams has active suspension. What were we trying to get? Jordan's active suspension? No, we're going to go for Williams' active suspension. Um, where is Williams? They have power brakes. Traction control, power brakes. It might be active suspension level 1, which does not benefit us at all. But we're going to try anyway. Can we get level 4 traction control? No, we can't. Dang it. Uh, keep progressing in terms of design. Oof. Um, yeah, that car is toast. Car 2 is completely toast. Damn it. <laughs> Lazy, why? Okay, what do we do then? 34% to build a car and 400k. 39 to build a 2004 car. 30% to build the power brakes, which I'm absolutely going to do. I'm going to build those power brakes. Let me build some spares. If I can build four spares. And I'm going to build a very, very expensive car. Build another 2003 car. It's going to be like 800k or something like that. Nearly. Okay. So, car 2 is in the bin. We bought a new car 2. Couldn't buy any more... Um, any more 2004 cars, but that should be perfectly fine. Let me do this little trick, which should reset uh, the way the 8s are going, and maybe should help us get traction control. We're gonna start that. Now I'll go to personnel and let's see. What can we hire? No one in commercial. Some people in design. Actually, uh, stand by. Because we got that people. So, move one from very good. Uh, two from good, three from average, and five from trainees. I need to keep track of that correctly so I can do it properly. Um, just one, and then two, and keep it that way. Keep it that way. Mechanics. Definitely need more mechanics. We won't get them, though. One, and that's it. That's that that's it. Right. Here. Uh, more cash from Marlboro. Bonus sponsorship. I more cash will have been nice. And fast star upgrades from Michelin. Hmm. Let me use this advantage on Marlboro so that we can get the guaranteed guaranteed deal faster and then move on to the cash sponsors. Uh, let's talk to... Stop talking with Parmela, talk with Elf because they should be happy with us. They are the French national fuels, they should be happy. Oh yeah, these set of points. Um, since we have slow speed understeer, we need to turn this next race, the Hungaroring, 
into a fast track. To do that, you just need six speed points. We have six set of points here. Three for Alonso, three for Bernoldi. Now the Hungaro Ring is a fast race, so we don't have to bother about uh, the durability of our tires. What I'll do now is do my usual testing, prepare everything, and come back to you. Um, still no tires, no new tires, no new anything. This is going to be a race where we'll probably run a three stop. And I want to run it properly. I'll see you in a moment. So, I did the entirety of the testing, of course, full, uh, setup and research, because that's the only thing we can affect so far. 90, 10 for everyone, except 1090 for Bordeaux, of course, on 109 miles, that gave me full setup, which I already invested, and full research. For the research, I already used it, 3 points for CFD simulation, that should be full anyway, and 3 points on traction control, that should be, maybe it's gonna be full by the end of this. Managed to repair every single car, the sacrifice was that I'm out of spare parts again, that should not be an issue, for the most part. I still have to rebuild some, but it's fine. I have not changed much here, everything else the same. 30, 34, 28, 28 should be able to get those deals done pretty simple. Now, here, there are two things that I could have done right here. The first one is to make the tires more durable by investing in tarmac, or make ourselves faster by investing in dust. In the end, I decided to make ourselves faster by increasing dust. I hope that's the right call. We can make three stops on the softs, so it should be perfectly fine. And I'm gonna give Alonso the hard, because I don't trust the three stop that much in this game. So I'm gonna give Alonso the two stop on the hards. This doesn't really matter much, although I cannot use my orders willy-nilly in this race. I have to be more careful with them. So eight here, put it six, six. Six, six. Actually, put it five, six. I think we're gonna overheat if we go... 6 on the acceleration. Right! Let's save the game. Get into the Hungarian Grand Prix. This is gonna be... Gonna be a bit painful, but it's gonna be fun. I'm not, be, I'm not gonna try to pronounce that. Hungary. So, very dry and high wind speed again. High wind speed everywhere. I'm not sure if that affects people though, like, when I check the, the, the race AID, which I have to make tutorial on how to read it, and how to make the Excel graphs that I am showing right now, and, you know, in the blogs and in, right here. Um, I haven't seen that value for wind, or maybe it's taken into account in the tire grip factors. Anyway, I'm not sure what wind does. I think it does affect cars, but I'm not completely sure. Um, last chance to change which tire they're using. I'm gonna keep this configuration. Bernoldi is gonna be running uh, two run, uh, three runs of four tire of four laps each. Alonso is just gonna run uh, single lap shots, basically. So let's get in there. It is a miracle. David Coulthard is not on pole. It is the Michael put it on the pole for once. And then you have Giancarlo Fisichella for a Ferrari front row lockout. It's been forever since we had a Ferrari front row lockout. David Coulthard and Mark Webber and are third and fourth, locking down the second row, then Prost uh, after that hideous qualifying performance. In Germany, lockout the third row with Alonso on the hearts, beating Bernoldi on the softs. That... <clears throat> that summarizes Enrique Bernoldi's day so far. Uh, Barry Kello is 7th in the Williams. Then you have 8th Panis, 9th De La Rosa, 10th is Montoya, 11th. For Raikkonen, here is the rest of them. Jaguar, you keep in impressing me. It's just absurd, man. Amazing. So, 29 degrees Celsius temperature, very dry, average wind speed. That's 
that's that's honestly fine okay um dry hearts dry subs okay alonso it's going to run 28 30 58 30 58 and 19. so long first stint so that he overcuts people long second stint so that he can also overcut people Although I could make it shorter, more balanced, but let's make it just two laps shorter. It uh, should be fine. So, overcut, a bit... Mm, I want to have two overcut opportunities, so let's do this. 30, 28, 19, that should be fine. Bernoldi. It's going to go 21, 42, 63. And let's go setting the fuel, 21, 21, 21, and then go all the way to the end. 14 laps of fuel. <clears throat> Make it just 20 laps. I want to go shorter than that, so let's add two more laps on these things. Gonna be a very short aggressive stint. Well, the first one is not as aggressive for long. That should be good. And go very aggressive. He's gonna be able to be very aggressive on tires at number seven, which is gonna be completely fresh. Just 13 laps, gonna be, be able to attack anyone that he desires. So, two stop for Alonso, three stop for Bernoulli. Let's get in there. Save the game as per usual. Save. 100% in the race speed. Hit the brake, drop the off racing line because I don't want you just running off racetrack. On, uh, because, you know, overtaking is difficult around here and there's one area where you can make mistakes. Saracen is not going to be a concern. The VARs blow it again. There goes Enrique Bernoldi going backwards. Good job. Bernoldi not having the greatest of, of days today. At the very least, Alonso keeps up his position. Enrique, what are you doing, man? Please. No, 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 no. You stay at 7. You stay there. Okay. So, Alonso manages to hold on to 5th. Bernoldi's gonna have his work cut out for him because now he has a climb. Good luck, man. You just make everything more difficult. The question is, Alonso needs to stop pushing, otherwise he's going to make a mistake. There goes Bernoldi. He needs to back off now. He's going to make a mistake. He made the mistake. Bernoldi, why? That area of the racetrack has a section, this, this, this part right here. You can make a mistake there, which I think happened to Fisichella. So yeah, Bernoldi's race is done. Absolutely done. Let's increase this to five so that they uh, directly start overtaking people instead of me having to, like, be involved. But, yeah, Bernoldi's race is completely done. <clears throat> so, we are relying once again on Fernando Alonso to give us a solid result, which he absolutely can do, but... It shouldn't be just the Alonso show. It should be the Prost show, not the Bernoldi show. God, I think he's gonna make a mistake again. He did not. Good. Okay, good, 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 good. This should have gone down ages ago. Now it went down. So, the situation is... Alonso is third. He's gonna be able to be a rock and hold on that position. Bernoldi is 15, he's on a 3-stop strategy, so he needs to climb up all the way over here. In 20 laps. Good luck, Enrique. We'll see you later. <clears throat> Bernoldi and his uh, challenges in terms of getting going and being 11th right now, he's, he's, he's done some progress. Physical is annoying Alonso, but... He's gonna have to hold on. 
meant that I did not pay attention to the initial DNF. So Tarso Marcus and Jensen Button decided to uh, see each other and crash into each other. Good job for, for them. Frensen got an electronics issue, and something I mentioned in the Grand Prix Manager 2 Discord is that electronic damage only happens when you do this. When you send an order. So right there, that's two points of electronic damage for Bernoulli. The thing is, I have like 250 electronics points. Bernoulli, why are you burning your tires? I can't win this dude. So yeah, I have like 250 electronics points. So I can issue about 250 orders and then the electronics will die. Not before that. So if at any point you see this, like an electronics DNF, it's not because of any order you had, it's because of a random issue. Even at the lowest, I think you have at the very least 100 orders to be able to be used. Bernoulli made up another place, good job. You have like 100 orders? You're not going to use 100 orders in the entirety of that. You just won't do that. It's not gonna happen. Anyway, let's continue. It is time for Bernoulli to pit, and I just consider something. Bernoulli is going to be doing three stops, and Alonso is going to be doing two stops. That's a grand total of five stops we're going to be doing today, which means the pit crew is going to be busy, and there's five chances that they make a mistake. Chance number one, here we go. Okay, Fizzy is on a clear three-stopper. He's all the way back here. Pedro de la Rosa had pit as well. Bernoulli is going to be behind, obviously. Okay, compared to De La Rosa, it wasn't that bad. He's also three-stopping. We should be able to beat him as well. Oh, was it? Okay, our pit crew was marginally faster, but in this game, that doesn't quite matter. We do have a lot of pace, so we should be able to catch and pass De La Rosa. In the meantime, Alonso is third and... I can't see any scenario where he finishes lower than 5th. Yes, lower than 5th. The reason for that is Barrichello could 1 stop, uh, Panis could 1 stop, and the 1 stop for the AI is pretty powerful in this game. In this track, I mean. So, yeah. He could finish 3rd or he could finish 5th. It will all depend on the AI strategies. We're going to see. On to the next uh, pit stops. Actually, Bernoldi is going to be fighting a Ferrari and a McLaren. And of course, uh, De La Rosa, but he should be able to get rid of De La Rosa in a few corners. So, I'll see you later. And now it is Alonso's turn. Michael Schumacher is clearly on a one stop, so he's probably gonna win this race unless he DNFs a La Fisichella in the French Grand Prix. David Coulthard is. Damn it, Fernando! David Kulhar is also on a two-stop. There is a small chance Alonso can beat him if... Okay, I was gonna start complaining that they could not restart the car. But he needs to get out ahead of Fisichella. Yeah, he's, he's clear of Fisichella. Now, everything he needs to do is... Not push the brakes too much, because he's in clean air, he doesn't have to overtake anyone just yet. He can just take it easy for now, and he should be able to catch up to Coulthard. Remember, Alonso right now has fresher tires, he might be heavier, but he's gonna have better tires by the end of his stint, so he's gonna be able to close the distance. Maybe not right now, but soon enough. Uh, Bernoulli is a bit in a bit of a no-man's land, because I don't think he can quite catch Fisichella. But Barrichello back there, he cannot catch him, so I'm pretty confident in doing this for a, while, for a while. Yeah, things are stable for now, so... Half race report when Bernoldi pits again? I think we can do that. No! <laughs> the Benettons took each other out. The Benettons were fighting for position and they DNF each other. Man, at this point, who was their TP? Like, at least in the real life thing in 2003 was Flavio. 
Flavio's gonna grill them both. <laughs> what have they done? So, welcome to the Health Race Report, where I decided to change stuff a little bit. I was going to pit Bernoldi in lap 43. I'm gonna pit him this lap. Why? Because, well, he was about to catch Alonso, so I wanted to prevent him from running into Alonso, running into traffic, he's overheating, which is not ideal. I had him pushing. I had him pushing. That's the, that's the issue. Uh, it should be fine. It should be perfectly fine. No one panic. Uh, the engine condition is fine. Can we get out ahead of Fizzy? Yes, we can. Um, so, the current race situation is Michael Schumacher leading the race significantly. He's on a one-stop, so he's going to win this race outright unless he DNFs. David Coulthard on a two-stop all the way over here. Um, doing decently fine. Third, it's our boy, Fernando. Uh, let me lower that because Fernaldi is in, in clean air. Uh, Fernando is third and pretty far away from cool cars. Michael Schumacher is slowing, but that's because he's heavy on fuel, like Fourth is Rubens Barrichello, then Mark Webber in fifth. Sixth is Bernoldi, seventh is Fisi, and eighth is Montoya. The Benettons will be in the points, but um, they took each other out. Flavius probably already destroying them poor guys um anyway i think bernoldi has a significant chance of being able to finish fourth fourth seems like a realistic option get okay i was gonna ask that sauber a lazy to get our whole uh, out of our way without taking us out um there is significant chance for bernoldi to finish fourth right here in front, uh, right behind Alonso and Alonso has a good chance of finishing third I don't think he's gonna finish second unless Coulthard runs into some sort of issue during his pit stop which again I doubt let me increase this so that he can clear that Jaguar okay, that, clear the Jaguar so let's go back to safety so yeah, things are looking stale for now, but remember, we have two more pit stops, one for each of the guys. And that could ruin everything. We already had an issue with Alonso stalling the car. I just hope we don't run into any issues this time around, because things are looking good, and I want them to remain good. This has been the half Free Support, and I hope to see you on the next stops. It's final pit stop time for Alonso. Remember last time out he stalled the car on the pit lane. So I don't want that to happen. I don't think we're finishing second either way. But still, I'd rather not have that moment happen to him. No issue whatsoever on the stop. He should come out ahead of Bernoldi as well. And if he doesn't, it's fine. In fact, I would have preferred that Bernoldi actually pit, uh, actually pit, actually came out ahead so that I could give him way. But uh, that's not, that just, just didn't happen. Okay, Alonso time to get up to speed. We are not catching David Coulthard. And Bernoldi's catching you. I don't think he's going to get there, but if he does, you're going to give him way. And um, Bernoldi, I see no reason why we shouldn't finish ahead of Fisichella. Um, Rubens might be a bit tougher, but it's not impossible. He could do it. Let's see if he has enough pace to do it, though. Final pit stop time for Bernoldi. He <clears throat> still has to do half a lap. And he has Alonso ahead. Um... But there's no good passing opportunity for him to sneak into. So I'm just going to leave it as is. <clears throat> Depending on the stop. If Bernoldi has a solid stop. Let me stop pushing. Okay. Uh, if Bernoldi has a solid stop, I could have given him another lap. But uh, it's already too late. He's ahead of... How long will it be? At the very least, ahead of Fizzy, I think. Get the hose out of the car, please! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he will have been ahead of, of 
of Barrichello, I think. Now he's just barely ahead of Pizzi. Damn. Two mistakes on the same race by the pit crew. That hadn't happened in a while. That hadn't happened in a while. I might have made a mistake, though. <clears throat> no, I didn't. Okay, I was looking at Alonso. Alonso should take over to the proper amount of la uh, fuel uh, in a moment, in some laps, perhaps. Back off. You're not going to make the same mistake you made at the beginning of the race. Okay, now you just need to get past that Jaguar. Anyway, Enrique Bernoldi has enough fuel. He actually has a bit too much fuel. Alonso is going to finish there. It's, 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 it's perfectly fine. But Bernoldi... <clears throat> Sixth isn't bad. But I will have liked to finish fourth. Now it's a miracle for him to finish fourth. We'll see what happens. He might be able to catch up to Barrichello and overtake him. Or, well, at the very least, catch up to Weber and overtake him. We'll see. All I know is Alonso is not going to catch up to uh, to Coulthard. <sighs> Sad. Michael Schumacher entered his final lap. And David Coulthard managed to close the distance. It will be very, very close, but not enough. He ran out of time. Tom Pritchard is going to win the race. At the very least, Fernando Alonso is going to salvage the situation, getting a third place finish. Not bad at all. Bernoldi had difficulties all, all, all race at that terrible start, managed to salvage that, and then he had a pit stop issue, which <clears throat> made everything, everything worse. Michael Schumacher wins the Hungarian Grand Prix from David Kulhar and... Michael Schumacher is going to be on... Uh, Michael Schumacher. Fernando Alonso is going to be on the third step on, of the podium. Not bad at all. Barrichello is going to be fourth, fifth Weber and sixth Bernoldi, who probably should have finished fourth, but didn't because of the mistakes and the pit stop, uh, the pit stop mistakes. Although the team is good, still... Still a lot to improve, mostly our pit crew and, well, the engineering department as well, we need spare parts. 21-4, not sure how fast was that lap. Confirmation, the Michael, from Coulthard, from Alonso, from Barrichello, Weber, Bernoldi, Fisichella and Saracen. Fisichella basically vanishing this race. Everyone else was at least two laps down. Just fast people. Just fast people. The Jaguars made it to the end. Truly made it to the end. A Sauer made it to the end. And a BAR made it to the end. Not bad. Here's every other people that the end. Plenty of them. A lot of them. <clears throat> so, Kulhar has a 5 point lead over Michael. Alonso tied at 63 with Pisikela. Not bad. Bernoldi with 34 points, catching Weber is going to be a bit more difficult now. And yeah, those positions, we're not getting the constructors. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're not getting it. So, <clears throat> small profit, good. Said, stop complaining. Construction, I know it's ready, I just don't have the engineers to build it. Okay, the deal with Marlboro is great, Reynolds doing better. Uh, licensing, I don't care about no licensing. We found a driver aid. Ooh, let's go check that out right away. So we found Williams is running active suspension level. I, I, that's not useful for me. I already have active suspension one. Damn it. Please, please, we scrapped a point. We actually scrapped uh, three. Sponsors are happy. Good. Cross happy. Minardi, it's getting works power. Good job. Uh, Sauber BMW, good. Where have I seen that before? Arrows. Uh, actually, we need to check that out. We need to check out how things are going in the uh, 
What's the term I'm looking for here? In terms of sponsors and in terms of lineups. I'm gonna do the lineups in the next show, but the sponsors I can check out right here in a moment. Uh, Sauber, Sauber, what kind of... Sauber have... no, they have not approved active, so that's just active level 1. Why Frank? Why him? Anyways, money's still going up. Good. Now, what I'm gonna do here, my, my arm, is approve that. That hasn't gone through, but it's fine. I'm going to build another 2004 car and build the usual, at least four spares. Of which I should only use two to repair the cars. They upgrade the technology, I have the cash, and you have just 1%, and now you build more technology. Now, um, yeah, just one spare part should do this. Real easy. Uh, anything else I can do here? Oh, I can. Yes, I can. Somewhat, but I can. Up. Up. I save up. And three out of here, three, up. Good. Commercial needs to improve. Design is going to improve. Okay. Up. 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 And just two out of here. Up. Good. Okay. Engineering, uh, how many can I find? Not enough, so just up. Mechanics. Perfect! Up. 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 And that's it. Should be able to get ten, 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 uh, a bunch of 10s by the end of, like, next year or something. <laughs> well, actually, next year we might get a bigger factory. We're gonna be able to employ 60 people. Right. So, this hasn't moved which is an ideal, but we should be able to get it to bonus level 3 by the end of the year. Perfect. Marlboro is nearly done. We're gonna get 3-4 million from them, which is... significant value. Engine, assist engine R&D, which is exactly what I wanted. Now we're gonna be able to remap the engines, which I will explain in 2004, don't worry. Uh, what, I, what else I need to do here? Take this out. So I can properly distribute stuff. On sending proof design for the clutch. The other thing I needed to check out was clutch and electronics. So we're working on clutch durability now. I don't care about electronics that much. So um, sponsors, uh, main sponsors. Let's see everyone. So uh, BAR is going to be sponsored by Red Bull. Arrow is going to be sponsored by Benson and Hedges. Benetton is going to be sponsored by Lucky Strike. A compact is going to remain with Williams. West Ferrari is still amusing. Um, Mile 7 McLaren. <laughs> yeah, no. And Marlboro Prost. Lucky Strike, thank you for all the cash, but gotta level up. Engine. Engine. No one wants to sign Ferrari or McLaren uh, Mercedes power. I personally will do it, but the objective of this campaign is to have a totally French team, so I just can't do it. Maybe at some point I do a 2023 campaign where I use a GPW Edit plus a Hex Editor to unlock teams like uh, engine suppliers like Cadillac or Audi or Porsche, and I don't know, take over Sauber, may, uh, Sauber, yeah, turn them into Audi, like basically just signing Audi power, and basically be the, the German super team. That's something I can do. So, uh, to sum up, Ferrari, Mercedes, no one wants them. Renault has crossed ourselves, and Jordan, so Sauber lost that deal, with Jordan. 
Of course, Sauber won out in the end because they went for BMW Works power. Benetton gets a partner deal out of that. Not sure if they won. I'm not sure what Ferrari is doing because they signed that partner deal ages ago and then they allow Minardi to sign a Works deal. It is what it is, <laughs> Ferrari, dear lord. And McLaren, Cosworth, with Williams getting a partner deal and VAR uh, neglecting the existence of these two to go for a customer deal. The good thing is that the Cosworth engines, because of the low level cash, because of the low level cash, they don't have to pay that much. Same with these two boys, Jaguar and Arrows going for Asia Tech. Because of the low level cash, they don't have to pay that much. Man, I saw one of Ferrari engines right now. Or a Merck engine. Merck a bit down on reliability, but it's perfectly fine. Ferrari, full power, full heat. I want that. Renault? Renault has a level 2 spec engine, which they have not provided to us yet. Mostly because we're customers, but partner teams, I'm pretty sure, already had access to the 02A spec of engine, so Sauber is probably running a better engine than ourselves. Um, not sure how much different it is from our, our current engine. I can. Better response, I think. Better response, better reliability. No, more reliable. I think better weight rating as uh, weight rating as well. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. BMW, plenty power. Stupidly good power. It has these, these engines are so developed, none of them have weaknesses. Like, the Renault, the biggest weakness it has is it just doesn't have power, which is a big weakness, don't get me wrong. Uh, the Cosmord, it's unreliable, but when you get automatic gears, that's not a big, not a big deal. The Asia Tech is just underpowered and unreliable, so I wouldn't recommend getting it. But the Merck and Ferrari, man, they're just so good. They're just so good. Everyone has that level 2 spec engine, but Renault doesn't give them, doesn't give us the upgraded engines. In terms of tire, not that, that, okay. Um, so far, McLaren, Williams, and Jaguar are the only Bridgestone teams. Prost, Ferrari, Benetton, Jordan, Arrows, and Sauber <coughs> Excuse me. Six teams are using Michelin rubber. It's gonna be six teams, and here you have three teams, that's nine. Two teams are still uh, waiting to sign uh, tire deals. I will go for Bridgestone in this situation because of the remaining partner deal, even though it's easier to sign Michelin. Right now, in terms of grip, Bridgestone wins in the dry and Michelin wins in terms of inters. In the wet is pretty much similar. Bridgestone has much better tires in terms of resilience. Michelin wins in stiffness. And temperature, I don't really mind temperature, but I, uh, yeah, the, the dry spec of tires for Bridgestone is a bit more stable. Whereas Michelin's wet weather spec is more stable as well. Uh, fuel. No one's going for mobile. I will go for mobile, but I have the, the deal with Elf, and mobile is not French. Uh, Shell, McLaren, and Benetton. Uh, sure. Uh, Texaco, Sauber, and Williams. BAR going for Petrobras. Niseki, Mitsubishi, Jaguar, and Elf is Prost and Ferrari. Elf still has the best engine tolerance, and it's the reason why I choose it. They have a level 2 fuel, and they have not provided it. Why? Texaco has the best performance, but um, I'd rather have my engines survive. Uh, cash is like, it's, it's, it's honestly not that important. Like, if you want to check it out, here it is. No one's signing HP, that's interesting. No one's signing Shuko. You can pause if you really want to, to, to see these sponsors. So yeah, there we go. 
Uh, I need to start thinking about looking about uh, looking for Axis Suspension 2. No one has Axis Suspension 2, I think. Usually the player develops uh, driver aids faster than the AI can do them. Which is why we end up being much faster than them. Yeah, I think that will be it. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you really liked this episode. Good one in the long run. Uh, despite Bernoldi getting some absurdly terrible luck in this here episode. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Comment, like, subscribe, all the usual YouTuber stuff, and support me on coffee if you really so desire. And... Actually, last thing I want to do before I say goodbye. Alonso is 30... 27 points behind. And there are 40 points available. It's 27 points behind. And there are 40 points available. If David Coulthard scores 14 more points, championship is over. No matter what we do. So I just need to hope that Ferrari dominate the remains of the year so that Coulthard doesn't score that many points. And that we win out, basically. It's a long shot. It's not impossible. I am aware it's not impossible. It's just... It's the longest of shots, man. I'm not sure what's the biggest uh, uh, deficit that someone has come back from. Not necessarily to win the championship, but the biggest hole in this, in this uh, point system. Or even the previous point system. I don't know what's possibly the biggest hole anyone has come back, come back from. I will probably put it on screen or something, but... This will be bigger than that, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this particular episode, and I hope to see you on the next one.